Hello, this is Raphael Albuquerque, and today I'll be creating a video called A Typical Working Day as a Professional Translator. Uh, this video training um, session is part of the Translator Training Video Platform. And basically this video platform is the video resources that we provide to people who complete our online training and certification program for translators called the Certified Translation Professional or CTP designation program. You may have already seen our website online um, or some of our other videos, but our, our website is right here, translationcertification.org, if you want to learn more. So now let's get right into this video. Um, basically, you know, we always like to start out with why we're trying to provide this specific advice on translation careers. And in this case today, we're providing you a look at what um, really experienced and very successful translators, where they're spending their time every day so that you can you know, maybe learn a thing or two about what you could improve about your own translation work, or your own translation projects, or translation business. And then also, you know, if translation is really your passion, maybe by looking over what others have done, you can learn how to grow, you know, your business or, you know, just become great at figuring out what you need to do every single day to be really successful. Because it's easy to be, you know, naturally strong in one part um, and maybe weak in another area that you hadn't realized you need to pay more attention to. So first off, even though this video is about a typical day in the life of a professional translator, uh, really every day is different and there is no typical day. Um, there's typically not much room for boredom because you're usually very busy working on projects or very busy marketing yourself and your profile to gain more projects. Um, every day there's new challenges and tasks that you need to complete and um, it's hard to frame what in a, you know, a typical day would be for a translator because they do have to do so many different things. Um, if you're a freelance translator, this is even more true, um, and you just have to be careful because you might have some projects that you're responsible for, such as translating legal documents that could include a birth certificate or a marriage certificate, and if you're very busy with other projects or other things in your business, it might be hard to do a great job on those projects and take the time it really needs to do well there. Also, the uh, field of translation is, is large. Uh, one may become a legal medical translator, while others may want to become specialized in other fields such as business or marketing. A translator that works with numerous fields are more likely to have clients at all times, but that doesn't mean that you should take on too many projects as once, um, at one time. And this is something that we covered in one of our previous uh, video trainings called Top 5 Translation Career Mistakes. Um, you don't want to get pressured into doing too many projects at one time or it can actually really hurt your business long term because um, your quality might go down, you get less uh, references, you'll get less um, carry-on or continuation projects from those same clients. Um, also a tip, um, since this is very challenging to become a successful translator, make sure you choose a little niche within the language such as business or engineering or law that you're naturally interested in so you can become you know, great at that, that niche area. So the next thing we're going to talk about is translation project management. This should be about 70% of your time um, and translation project management includes spending time on planning, organizing, managing resources, completing research, uh, completing draft translation, proofreading, editing, and coordinating work with your clients. And it's important to point out here that researching is an important part of this process. Uh, sometimes the research might not be tied directly to one client project, but spending some time researching the topics are going to give you a greater you know, overall understanding and the meaning behind the translation. It's just going to help you become more specialized within your niche and be able to help clients more effectively and quickly in the future. In addition to that, um, before submitting translation work back to your client, it's very important to carefully proofread it. Uh, proofreading of written material is the final and essential step that must be taken before the document can be considered complete. This is your time to catch mistakes, search for errors in spelling and punctuation, and just make sure that the meaning is right on for you know what the client intended the project to be for. Um, this is something where you know, many times your natural strength might be in marketing or might be in administrative tasks but maybe you know going over and checking your work might not be your strength so it's just important to recognize where you need to improve yourself and if you can't improve yourself then have an assistant or a translator you partner with to help proofread and check your work for you. Next, uh, about five percent of your time should be spent 
um, on office administration tasks involving invoicing clients, dealing with tax issues, working with administrative assistants, lawyers, or CPAs. Um, also, related to administration tasks, it's important to back up your data, your past translations, your portfolios, your resume. Um, you don't ever want to have even a chance of losing everything. In our business, we update our information on all of our computers once a week. Um, at the very least, I would suggest to update everything you have once a month. Um, and that way, you know, you can only lose three weeks or three and a half weeks at worst if your computer died or got stolen or somehow you lost all your data. Also, um, you know, while there's all these administrative tasks that everybody must do all the time, like dealing with taxes and invoices and everything else, it's also important to spend part of your day or at least part of your week in improving your administrative processes, maybe documenting your processes and seeing how you can improve them or creating easier to use project templates or client update templates and just administrative things that make your business run more smooth in the future. Um, this is an area often ignored if you're busy with marketing and project work. It's really easy to ignore these administrative areas. Um, next is marketing and if you are an experienced translator and you've been working for over a year or two in the industry then about 20 percent of your work should be spent networking or marketing. Uh, it's really important to keep on marketing, expanding your marketing knowledge and your presence in the industry um, every single week so that you can get more and more clients and an even better, you know, more trusted reputation uh, from potential clients. If you're just starting your business, um, the amount of project work might be 20% and your marketing might be 70%. It might flip, but I think that most translators have been working in the industry a few years. Um, I think their problem typically is you know, not spending enough time on marketing specifically and really getting their name out there in more places and meeting with potential clients more often. So this is kind of a reminder to make sure you always are doing some sort of marketing, even if you're very busy with projects. Um, nowadays, there's you know many ways to market yourself and make sure that you realize that while there's some places you can put your profile on online for free or market yourself at no cost, uh, lots of things do cost a little bit of money, but you have to look at the return on investment. Uh, if you have to invest $8 a month on a website hosting account or $10 on a domain name, you know, it's a very small investment for the potential return. So, um, you know, look at things that cost $100, $300 or less and see, you know, what the return on the money is. Don't write things off just because they aren't 100% free. Next is a personal development project projects. This should be the last 5% of your time and this includes uh, developing your knowledge about the culture and vocabulary behind the language you specialize in. Uh, this 5% could involve traveling, reading articles, watching movies, reading books, or most ideally visiting the country where the language you know is spoken. Uh, this is a great way to improve your skills and increase your knowledge on that specific language. Um, cultural awareness is sometimes underappreciated uh, by translators because um, so much is focused on getting a translation project complete. and you, know, you should just never assume that you fully understand um, the language other than your mother tongue. You should always be learning more. And the truth is, nobody, you know, nobody knows all of the vocab or meanings behind their own language, their own native language. So you should always be uh, learning and never, never become too comfortable or confident in your abilities. There's always more room for improvement. So the most valuable lesson that we covered here today from this session is that you know, as you probably already know, um, a lot of work is needed um, to work with high clients and pr translation projects all the time. So it's very important to guard your time and be very careful how you spend it as it's your most valuable long-term asset. Um, and time really is money, uh, so just guard it, you know, very carefully. So thank you for joining us today for this translator training video platform series, and we'll see